everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. I'm Mike Delicio. Welcome to the new Dice Tower Studios, our first in a long time top yeah. ten in person. Woo! I don't remember how this goes. It's too long. <laughs> it is. It is odd. Also, our, fir our first top ten in the last three days of air conditioning. Correct. <laughs> we were supposed to do this yesterday, mm. but we're glad you're with us today, folks. Um, be you'll be glad you're here because we have a contest, and it is a contest. A doozy. A doozy. So, to enter this contest, you need to email us at contest at dicetower.com, and in the subject line, put Mosaic Plus. You also have to answer a question, which I'll tell you in a second, because we want to talk about what the contest is first. Of all, you, there are five prizes for this contest, all right? But each five. prize has two parts. Okay. So you Keep will win a copy of Mosaic, which is a civilization game mm -hmm. online right now, a mm -hmm. pledge of Mosaic. Um, and you get a $50 Game Nerd Certificate. Hello! You get both of you win? You do. Wow, man. <laughs> How do I enter this contest? That's correct. I'm going to legally change my name right now. <laughs> I got a bunch of... Mike <laughs> Contest Winner. <laughs> it's my legal new name. <laughs> All right. So, anywho. Yeah, so that will be... Uh, well, this contest can be open for two weeks. So, if you're watching this later on, you can do that uh, and enter that. So, Mosaic is on Kickstarter right now from Glenn Drover, Forbidden Games, Big civilization game. Mm -hmm. It's not overly big because we have enough of those on our shelves for sure. Yeah. Uh, to win this game, um, all you have to do is in the body tell us how many wonder tiles are in the game. Mm. For that, you need to check out the Kickstarter with a link in the description below. Cool. Get on it. I'm on it. Alrighty. Well, 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 well. It's time to talk about the best 10 years in gaming. <laughs> uh, An best. easy. An easy top ten to make, right? This was so interesting as far as to how to approach it. You know what I mean? I think this is one of those lists that are probably going to say more about us as gamers than anything else. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, right. It's not a cut and dry kind of thing. Like, right. oh, these games are clearly better than those. Not that those are cut and dry. But, yeah, it's just tricky. The, the funny thing is, when we knew what the topic was going to be, I thought, oh, yeah, yeah that'll be easy. Yeah, right. Not at all. No, it was not. Because you then start digging in, and the closer you look, the sort of trickier things get. Well, this year had a lot of co-op games. Right. I like co-op games, but none of them maybe stood out. Okay, but this other year had a few of my favorite games ever. Right. What about the rest of the year? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, it was very tricky. So then I stopped thinking about all that and just picked 10 years. And that's kind of the thing. And you and I were talking a little bit before we got started of, okay, are we going to be talking about the games that were important to us or games that are important to the hobby? They may not be the same thing. There are games that are important to the hobby that I don't particularly games like. Games that are important to me are important to the hobby! Well, that's true. Wow. Because you're Tom Vassell. That was one of those, like, when I walk into a game store, I want to be recognized. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nobody's going to know what I'm talking about. That's an old school joke. Uh, <laughs> Before we uh, did put this list together, we did talk about how we were doing it, and we mm -hmm. talked about how this is the hobby. We're not, and games, we're not talking about, well, this year is important to me because this is when I got into hobby. Right, right, Or this right. is when the Dice Tower went full time. That doesn't really have anything to do with this. We're sure. talking basic based on games that came out in any particular year. Yeah. And that we like. Correct. So therefore... No, 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 no. That, I didn't do that. I picked, I thought, the games that changed the hobby and were important to the hobby, the best years of gaming. Okay, well, you took you came at it from a slightly different angle. I, I, I did a little of both. I will say that. There were some years where I'm going to be listing, when I go through my years, I'm going to be listing the games that I thought put it on this list for me. Mm -hmm. Some of those games will not be my favorite games, but most of them will be games that are really, I feel, are great games. Before we start this, we also, I want to point out, that I would not allow one game. One game did not Correct. change my thing. So yes. I did not go back in time and find the year Go came out right. or the year Chess came out. Mm -hmm. I did. I I needed there to be more than one game. There's one year in particular, and I'm going to wait to see if it's on your lists, that no. almost made mine okay. because of the power of two games. Okay. Um, but So you're going very, like... You, you are looking at this as a statistician would, going, mm. this is an important year because X, Y, or Z, no matter who you are. Yes. Well, that's boring. Yeah, mine's a little more, <laughs> mine's a little more personal. Mine's a little Otherwise, more personal. I would have just gone through my top 100 and put the year after all the games and then found which ones, you I'll know. I'll tell you the truth, I considered doing that. I, that was, that was going to be my starting point, and I scrapped that idea. But I, I actually almost considered doing that. 
I'm just such a cult of the new gamer that I was concerned that it would skew things too much. Maybe you and I are in trouble with this list. Mm-hmm. But this is okay, be like the historical well, games. And, all and over. here's the thing, and this is be one of those ones. <laughs> there's going to be people in the comments and uh-huh. elsewhere who are going to criticize this list because they're going to say there's not a lot of older years on it. Yeah. Like, oh, we didn't put 1977 in Cosmic Encounter. Yeah, but that was the only thing that came out. Dungeons right. and Dragons came out around the same time, but that didn't make it a great year for gaming. That brings up an interesting point, or an important point, I think. This is my opinion. I think that board gaming is an iterative hobby. They designs build off of earlier designs. My personal opinion is that games are getting better all the time. I 100% agree with that. And, and so therefore, I think that my list is going to have more games from you know the more recent history because games have gotten better. They're learning. Right. They're building. You know what right, I mean? Right. I agree. So, which is why. There's a certain year I did not go below on my computer here when we're looking mm-hmm. at the years. But I, we'll find out. Hmm. All right, who's first? Is it you, Mike? I think it's me. All right, let's get to this. All right, well, my number 10, gentlemen. Oh, Are we boy, ready? ready? Are we ready for this? Garbage. This is going to be a brutal. <laughs> You're really setting me up for success here. No, right. no, I'm, I'm scared now that Tom's right. like, no, My there's a right answer. <laughs> I didn't say and a that. Wrong I'm answer. saying how I put the list together. So here's what I'm going to do uh, and for all of these. I'm going to tell you the year first, and then I'm going to list the games that for me put it on this list. And okay. then we're going to look at the year. And, and then you look at the year. You. Okay, so my number 10 is Nobody 2007. Told us about that. Okay, I'm already on the page. Ooh. And so here are the games that I listed Agricola. Okay, for sure. Race for the Galaxy. Look, he picked the top two owned games. He's a, he's a populist. Galaxy Trucker. <laughs> Is he just reading the list? No, I'm What's reading next? my list. All right, what's next? Bibliotes. Oh, you're oh, doing you it. messed up. It was supposed to be Brass <laughs> Lancashire. Coliseum. No, it's supposed to be Kingsburg. <laughs> Jamaica. Oh, you're yes, back on Yes, you're back on. <laughs> Tammany Hall. No, you're back off again. Okay, so to me, those games are all games that I... Well, some I like more than others, but I think that they are all either favorites of mine or are important games that are still being played today. I don't think there's a game <clears throat> excuse me, on this list that is not being still played. And okay. I think that they are all, you know, Agricola is kind of the granddaddy of worker placement games, right? And Race for the Galaxy is still... Yeah, I mean, still... if you want to straight up ignore Kalos, then yeah, sure. Well, no, I don't. Well, I kind of do want to. Actually, I would argue Agricola is not as strong of a worker placement game because you only start with two workers. Yeah, but when you say, okay, worker placement games, Mm -hmm. I think Agricola is the game that that people think of. For like, if you're talking about the history of worker placement, Kalos, yes, might be the, it's not still not even considered the first. I think some people will argue one of the key games was, but. Key? I think. Don't be bringing Breeze up in here. I'm just saying. A Breeze? Full Breeze? No, no, Richard Breeze. 2007, my number 10. I think it's a solid year. You know, I still think that all of these games I mentioned are, are played. You'll notice that, you'll, well, you'll read into it, the fact that I'm not arguing with Mike. All right. Oh, no, oh, I'm in trouble. All right, Z. Oh, I'm scared and confused. <laughs> Here we go. My number 10 pick. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm consulting my list. We're judging. My number 10 pick is the year 2000. I'm out. In the year 2000, we had Carcassonne, mm. the Lord of the Rings, <laughs> Citadels. <laughs> I do have Citadels and Hive written mm. right there. So, mm. uh, actually, you know, all four of those are on my written list. That's funny. I didn't realize you were Princess doing of that. Florence. I don't care for, but I know it's a big game. I knew you, you were going to say it. That's why right I put shoulder. it in the background. What? Yeah, that that stern-looking Euro, European man is judging you silently from this box. Sure is. Um, so yeah, Carcassonne, Hive, Citadels, um, Lord of the Rings, which was a very early co-op game for mm-hmm. adults anyway. Mm-hmm. One I put on here, which I think is an interesting one, Blockus, or Blocus, I don't care how you say yeah. it. Um, because it was one of those early kind of first steps into, hey, you can get respect from gamers with right. this game and buy it at Barnes & Noble. Yes. You know? Yes. Yes. And it was, Blo- uh, Blockus or Blocus was one of the early ones that managed to do that and nobody sort of turned up their nose at it in either camp. Right. I think that's, that was an important turning point for the way we see this whole gaming thing. So, yeah, 2000 I think was a very strong year. 
Yeah, 2000 did not make my list. However, it was one I considered because there was... We only could put ten. Sure, sure. And sure. this is every year. I mean, everything's uh, in seventeen seventy one <laughs> and after. I'm you're, gonna, so you're just going to leave Senate out? You're going to leave Go out? This is the They're out. cult of the new. Yes. Anyway, this is a pretty strong year. This was a very Euro-y year. Euro mm -hmm. games were was. king at this yeah. point in time. Carcassonne was uh, one of the two games besides Catan that really brought gaming into the wider hobby. Sure, so course. I considered it for that. Mm -hmm. I mean also Lord of the Rings, but it was a little early for the co op. The co op did not really hit till yeah. about five, six years later. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This was ahead of the curve. Solid choice, E. Thank you. That's all I'm gonna say. <sighs> it's gonna go down from there, I feel like it's right. gonna get worse. <laughs> well I'm gonna jump way into the early oh. you know recent and this is actually like so I'm, now I'm gonna going to spoil going now this is the newest year on my list okay wow okay. Dude, that is a spoiler and that's 2018 okay ah. 2018 the newest and I think 2018 so it has root and rising sun mm -hmm. 2018 is the year Kickstarter starts reigning supreme. Yes. It really is. Look at these top four games. Mm -hmm. Root, Rising Sun, Nemesis, Everdell, all Kickstarter. Correct. Um, all four of these games from very powerful companies that are still powerful now. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, Game Salute, I guess, is mostly Everdell, but still. Yeah, sure. Um, we see the, the, the first of the T games. Well, I guess Zulkin was before this. Zulkin was before. Architects right. of the West Kingdom, mm -hmm. the Quack Quacks, which is a powerhouse. Still people are playing it everywhere. Very much. Western Legends. This was just... I don't know what kind of year, but when I a lot of my favorite games are in this year for sure. Mm -hmm. But these are games that are still being played. Keyforge showed up this mm -hmm. year. Villainous showed up. Mm -hmm. This was 2018 was the year that we saw a lot of uh, IP games start showing up in Target and stuff. Yes, yeah. I thought that was a pretty a pretty Chronicles of Crime. With the impact of which I, is, is going to be hitting the hobby for a long time. Well, look at those back to back Chronicles of Crime and Detective. I, that you're seeing that the app driven games really also coming right. to the forefront. And the mine and everything that did. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many games monkey the mind? Oh, you man. know what I mean? That should be the next game in the series. Monkey actually. the mind. <laughs> Mon it's the name yeah, of my no, band. That's actually. pretty clever. Was a pretty strong oh, roll yeah. and write that came out and mm -hmm. that put that on the map. Yeah. Um, I really like that you're looking through this because it's really going to help some of my arguments. <laughs> I mean, really. I, so you keep this up. I plan to, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, Space Bay is a pretty yeah. strong game. Yeah, so this is this is a earlier, you know, I mean, again, I hate being cult of the new to some degree. I but I also think it's I hard. I also think <laughs> it's hard to look back. At recent years, so I looked at 2019, yeah. for example. 2020 is way too recent. 2019, even I'm sitting there going. <laughs> 2019, I'm like, I need a few more years to kind of see where the year fell. So 2018 mm. might even rise up in five years. I might look back at 2018 and it's higher. But again, it's the newest uh, thing on my list. So you already hit one talking point. I was going to bring up for some later choices on my. List. Yeah, like. Like, we haven't had enough time to that's, ruminate that's upon correct. these years. That is correct. I would agree with that. All right. Huh. All right. Woo. That what was you good, Tom. <laughs> Nothing happened. Nothing, Nothing happened while you were watching. Here. Go back to your regular scheduled programming. My number nine, gentlemen, is... A little year I like to call 2004. 2004! Oh, 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 oh. Alright, so these are the games that I... Now this is one of the years, I will say this, this is specifically one of the years that I put more of the games are important, what I think are important to gaming, and less important to me personally. Okay, okay so there is a bit of a continuum, but these games to me are all powerhouses, uh, with a couple of little outliers. Power Grid, okay? Uh, Memoir 44. The, the granddaddy ticket to ride, right? I mean, he's, he's on the front page so far. It's it's hard, and I'm not even looking at that. These are right here. Now, here's my outlier. I really like bootleggers. Bootleggers came out this yeah, year. But that's not important to the. It's hobby. important to the hobby oh. because I like it. Wait, I haven't even got to it yet. Hang on. Bootleggers Hang on. could be important to the hobby, Tom. I'm looking. There it is. There you go. <laughs> Down there. Um, <laughs> Downfall of Pompeii. What well, the count of Carcassonne? Cockroach Poker. And honestly, my favorite of all of these is Blue Moon came out that year. Which I think is a, a really great. I'd love you. I'm Mike. sorry. I'm so sorry. Do you, do you guys want to talk? I'll leave. Uh, look, I mean, but again, most of, my favorite of all of those is Blue Moon, uh, even over Ticket to Ride, quite honestly. But Ooh! 
<laughs> so many of these games are powerhouses, right? I mean, they're just powerhouses. Any year that has Power Grid, Memoir 40, you could have stopped Chris, at the I top three. Chris, I know you're listening. We'll be needing you to sub in real soon. And <laughs> Ticket to Ride, right there, I think d deserves inclusion on a best of list. Um, so my number nine is 2004. I just think there are some real powerhouses in there, even if they're not my favorites. I didn't realize that was going to be judging me on my ratings that show here. I should have signed out and did a board game gig account that nobody <laughs> had rated oh, the game. That's Chris that's giving you grief. I know. Well, never Chris, mind. you can go back. About you don't that need to take my spot pick, Chris, anymore. you can ignore that. I'm All right. safe for another hour. What do you got, Z? All right, my number nine pick is 1995. Woo! I don't even have to look at my list. No, 1995 not has Catan, El Grande, Medici, High Society, Mystery of the Abbey. Hmm. Well, I'm going to argue Mystery of the Abbey did not. It came out in 1995 as a print and play. When did it come out? Well, Days of Wonder republished it a few years later. It was like 2001 or something. There's going to be yeah, some yeah, of those yeah. little things because I use BGG solely what they yeah. listed. And sometimes but anyway, they I don't mean, always agree. Use just, your brain! Just Catan. <laughs> right. It's basically Catan, and then this is the era of Reiner Knizia yeah. and Kramer and Keesley. Sure. And that carries through to like, you know, 2000, early like 2000s, 2002 or so. So El Grande, very popular game, of course one of the very first uh, area control area majority games, and then Catan is Catan, you might have heard of it. <laughs> and then Medici and High Society I think are just very good Canizia games, yes. um, especially High Society. I think Canizia really is very good when, when he's making something a little bit smaller. I feel the same way about uh, Friedman Fries. Actually. Yes, I agree. I think Friedman Fries is a better small game designer than the big stuff. I think mm -hmm. Power Grid is good, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of his other big games are very dry. Yes, they lack sort of like, they they lack that spark of a soul. Mm -hmm. Well, Power Grid's not the most. Uh, it's not known for being the most necessarily exciting game. It's just such a solid year. It's very design. well put together. Yeah. yeah. So 1995. Yeah. What do you? Got? 95 was my number 11. Okay. Um, oh, I see. Not good enough for you. No, 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 no. Well, here's the thing. I almost picked 95 anyway because 95 is pretty close to when Magic became a thing. Magic is 94. Mm -hmm. If you could, if Magic and Catan are in the same year, yeah. that's one. I really think so. So you're saying Catan wasn't good enough to make it onto your list? Just Catan by itself? Uh, no, I, 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 I said I, I, pre, I, yeah. I preloaded this list by saying right, one I game. And I was in the same boat. No, Catan and El Grande, it it's makes it El really Grande close. Is, you love El Grande. I do. And again, this is a strong year. I, I think it is. <laughs> Although, I'm saying that once you get past the top ten of this year, right. it's a lot of garbage. Yes. That was... Those leggers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, when I go down through this, I'm like, oh, uh, yeah. There's Once you go down, there's not a lot of games that are owned and played. Mm -hmm. Catan itself, I know people are looking at my 5.5 sure. rating. That's a personal thing. I still think the game is amazing. It's it's literally right there, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Pitch car. I know you love pitch yeah, car. Yeah, pitch car. We were just looking at pitch car. I yesterday. do, but yes. Alrighty. Well, actually, we have our first crossover here, and Ooh. on the same number. Wow. It's with you. Two thousand wow. and where is it? I can't. Two thousand four. <laughs> really interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, again, and this isn't just <laughs> tickets ride. Um, although I think tickets ride had a major impact on the hobby. I think it still does. It, major impact, not just from tickets ride, but the app was not very far behind this. Yeah. And that was the first good app, what mostly in computer at first. That's a really good point. That app was way ahead of its time. But it was on computer, but yeah, people were yeah. playing on that. Power Grid, Betrayal at House on the Hill. Love Betrayal at House on the Hill. Hate it. It's huge in the hobby here. It is still. Um, Saboteur, Memoir 44. I'm not a fan of Suro, but Clearly. my <laughs> <laughs> but my word, that's a very popular game. Sure. No, no, you got to be able to look be behind your what no, you no. like or not. I <laughs> did for this year, actually. Not me. No mm -hmm. thanks, still doing really well. Ingenious, which would have won the Spiel des Jahres, had Ticket to Ride not come Correct. out the same year. Correct. Go uh, War of the Ring. Mm -hmm. I mean, War of the Ring is still in the top. 15 games at BGG. Even Fairy Tale's a little sleeper there. That's pre Seven Wonders, right? I mean, yeah, that's one of the first drafting. First drafting Cockroach was Poker. A, I put How many people have played that? You know, mm -hmm. I can't believe Go is out of print right and, now. How's that possible? It's ridiculous. And HeroScape. Yeah. This was the year HeroScape came out. So, um, Access and Allies was reprinted. Four? Huh? What's the matter with you on Blue Moon? You are. 
He hates it. Wow. You didn't know that? I know. I knew he didn't like he, it. I mean, I've been, I've did. been being tortured. Okay, I don't want to put too fine a point on it, but outrageous. I don't want to sound like uh, I'm being hyperbolic, but I have been tortured. V, get me with no. Get me Kenitia's number. I'm gonna all call right. him right. But let's talk about a little bit about 2004. Also, 2004 was a turning year for us seeing Euro Games come to America. Yeah. Reef Encounter was picked up, Richard Brees put it out, was picked mm -hmm. up by Z-Man Games right. and brought over. Downfall of Pompeii was picked up by Mayfair right. and brought over. Goa came over from Rio Grande uh, as San Juan did. Saint Fantasy Petersburg. Flight was bringing stuff over and Ticket to Ride put this little company called Days of Wonder <laughs> on the map. They came out with Ticket to Ride and Memoir 44. They're never going to go past that year. Yeah. No, no. Having those two oh, one two punch of that houses. year. It's powerhouse. Yeah, so. Those are still two of their big, biggest games. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm this excited about my year nine, folks, 2004. Wait, we're going to get better. Here we go. All right, number eight is a millennial year. The year 2000. The, the year 2000 out. is in my number eight. Here are the games that I personally put down, and we've already talked about this year, but a Carcassonne, Battle Line, which we didn't mention, uh, Dream Factory, which no, Trump Fabrique, you know. That's you. That's um, on you. I, I still love Dream Factory, Java, Hive, Lord of the Rings. So we've talked about this year a little bit, but obviously this, this is, a, I think, an important year. I'm one of those uh, strange people that don't really love Carcassonne, but I understand and appreciate its sure. importance to the hobby. Um, there are still a lot of... Tile laying games haven't really changed that much from the patterns that Carcassonne really They really out. haven't. They really haven't, right? I mean, Actually, the whole genre isn't huge. If you not. think there would be more tile laying games, like there's not a lot of Carcassonne ripoffs. No. I don't know. I think there are. They just don't make... They don't quite bring anything new, so they kind of vanish. Well, you think of something like Isle of Sky, right? Which is basically Carcassonne with an auction. You know what I mean? Right. But that it's, was like a big award winner, I it, mean. It, right, it's a yeah. solid game, but it doesn't really change that much from what Carcassonne laid out. You know what I mean? Sure. It's this I, idea I of you're that, building yeah. a world in front of you. You're building a map in front of you. There's something that's very satisfying about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we've already talked about this year. I won't belabor it, but I think 2000 is a very, very solid year, an important year. All right. Is it? It's not on my <laughs> list. It's just a two-way crossover. Is it good enough? <laughs> All Go right. Ahead. My number eight. My number eight is 2011. Ooh. One of the most important years in gaming, <laughs> and if I say it like this, you will believe me. That's right. Okay, and uh, during that year, we had the best Stefan Feld game of all time, Castles of Burgundy. I thought you were going to say some other game just to be weird. No, that's a Chris Yee move. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, King of Tokyo came out this year. Summoner Wars came out this year. But the big one, and again, I know you said you weren't basing anything on a single game. Well, I guess I'm going to because I'm, I'm, I have to adjust. <laughs> Risk Legacy oh. came out this year. Hmm. I'm going to make the same argument with Risk Legacy that I said about Lord of the Rings, where it, well, yes, it was the sure. first, but it didn't, it did not knock the doors off. I beg to differ. That's why you're on the show. <laughs> no, my hinges at home were begging. really bad. <laughs> and when I got Risk Legacy, I bumped the door and it fell off the door. <laughs> Blew the doors off. Wow. Talk about a Chris yeah. Heejo. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what just happened? I know, anyway. I know you tried to call him in from the other room, but I feel like he's a possessed Z body. Oh. Oh. <laughs> anyway, what else is on there, Tom? Takenoko. I do like me some talking alcohol. Whatever, that didn't change anything. This, this King of Tokyo is, put yellow on the map for sure. It did. Yeah, King and of Tokyo is. Takinoko took Matago from being just a company that made games like Kemet and. Right. I don't know if even Kemet was out at this point, but. Mm -hmm. oh, Takinoko so. made the them a lot. Is, that game is still being played, I'm telling you, it is. Mage Knight, the board game was such a mind blowing thing for WizKids to put out. Because at this yeah. point, WizKids. They were 2.0 version, you know, they were coming mm -hmm. back out, mm -hmm. and they had, oh, they got Quarriers and stuff, and okay, fine. Mage Knight board game. Oh, okay, it's based on the Mage Knight Miniatures game by Vlada Kabato. I played it like, wait, what is what this? Is this? <laughs> this is not what you normally make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is true. This is true. Uh, this is th this year didn't make my list. It also did not make mine. Um, but uh, there are some solid games on here. Just uh, this one just... 
didn't quite get there for me. Didn't quite. Get it's there. a good year. Sure, it's really good. Sentinels of Multiverse. This actually is a love year. Letters from Whitechapel, actually. It's there a solid it year. Love mm -hmm. letters from Whitechapel. Yeah, it's a great game. Oh no, you said letters from Whitechapel. I think you said love letter from that's, Whitechapel. That's on a different list. That's coming up. By it the is way. actually coming up. Love letter. Letters from Whitechapel. Whoop. You send love letters ah, there is to someone you want to kill. <laughs> yeah, I guess 2011 then would be, I would remember this as the year that Yellow and WizKids made a big impression. Yeah. Uh, because I, ne I hadn't heard of Yellow before King of Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And WizKids, they were a different company before this. I don't know. I think the Risk Legacy is kind of valid to see a company oh, like I I, Hasbro. Yeah, yeah. That's the argument. Where they've had a, a first few, or most important. And they've I just had a few really sort of like uptakes along so. the way. Are you guys playing footy? What's going on? No, I really kicked them hard. I'm so sorry. Wrecked. That's what you get for like the blue moon. Wrecked the arch of my foot. I'm not going to be able to walk ever again. <laughs> HR? I'm glad that way. At least we. But you had a Kinizia on the phone. Hang on, I got a phone Kinizia's call. Kinizia's on hold. Oh, Hang on. Okay. I, got, I got a phone call. <laughs> Someone's calling me. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. This is weird doing this so early. I blame uh, anyway, 20, uh, what was it, 11? <laughs> uh, 2011. All right, my yeah. number eight is yeah. one year prior, 2010. 2010 was a garbage year. Everybody knows that. <laughs> All right, so 2010, the, uh, the biggest game that came out this year was Seven Wonders. Sure. But not just Seven Wonders, because Seven Wonders is a big game, put repos on the map. I mean, mm -hmm. repos was already slightly on the map. Right. Um, I remember him coming and saying, this is going to win the Spiel des Jahres. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, we'll see. 2010 is the year of Bowser, right? I mean... What a ridiculous one-two punch. Now, I know that Hanabi came out earlier with that Hanabi and I Ikebana. Ikebana. Yeah, Naba, but, Ikebana yeah. yeah, but this is the year that it really was, you know, in the mass market. What a slam dunk year. But I also want to talk about Forbidden Island because sure. this took Game Right, who made basically kid games, card games and stuff. Mm -hmm. They This put them on the map for gamers. But it also took cooperative games and brought it to the mass masses. Yes. More than Pandemic. It was a, yeah. two mm -hmm. years after Pandemic. And this was just like... Well, this game was beautiful, beautiful right. produced. It was like fourteen dollars. I was, I was going to say, whenever anyone would ask, what's the best value in board gaming? I think that game is the single best value in board. It's gaming. insane. It's ridiculous. You can get this thing at a bookstore or I mean anywhere for fifteen bucks, fourteen bucks. Yeah, yeah, it was insane. This was mm -hmm. such an easy game to recommend, and I still think it's one of those games you can definitely say if you. Don't know what you want. You right. want to dip your toe into this whole thing. You don't like conf confrontation and gaming. This is not going to cost you a lot of money. I think right. it's going to make a good impression. And it does. Absolutely. It just makes a good impression. We got a nice theme. We also had Dominant Species, yes. which is a, a big game. Uh, Fancy Flight was slightly on a decline, which is a weird thing to say in t 2010, mm -hmm. uh, from their, where they were four or five years prior. But Civilization, the board game, did well. But here's another major reason about this year. Alien Frontiers. Alien Frontiers. Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Yeah. Kickstarter started in 2010, and 11 years later, this is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, Ascension took the deck-building genre, peeled off from Dominion, and basically then had 100 clones made of Ascension. Sure. So it mm -hmm. almost was like, here's a branch of deck-building games, and they'll all follow this one Right, now. yeah, yeah. And then Glenmore. Oh, and Dungeons & Dragons Castle Ravenloft. Mm -hmm. I put that on my list because that Wiz, uh, Wizards of the Coast jumped into board gaming. Sure. And they made like five of these. Yes. And that kind of that, that cross pollen. The, they made that Drizzit game. Yeah. <laughs> kind of that cross-pollinization of, you know, role-play, D&D, board gaming. That's happened throughout the years, but I think that's a big part of it. And while there's not a lot of ratings for Defenders of the Realm, mm. this was also a turning year for Eagle Griffin. Sure. I mean, Eagle Griffin in 2010 was very different than where they are now. In fact, they weren't even Eagle Griffin. They were Eagle and Griffin games, if yeah. you remember. Mm -hmm. um, but this was their first, one of their first big box games. Sure. Um, so, yeah, a lot of great games came out this year. So, all right. 2010. Mm hmm. Okay. My number seven getting a little bit more recent gentlemen a little bit more recent oh see my list i think uh, i'm gonna have ups and downs and yours you're gonna slowly decline <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, you're gonna be like a souffle I, and it just slowly collapses you're tom's saying, gonna by like by the time you get to your three your mm -hmm. four tom's gonna be like wow that's right and now i'm gonna have some bad ones mm -hmm. and some i can justify i'm not some 
Judge or McJudgeyson. Oh, you're no, right. whatever you say, Mr. Blue Moon. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Arbiter of all that is good. All right, my number seven is 2015. All right, so these are the well, games. It's not that old. No, it's not. <laughs> these are the games that I put down for 2015. Blood Rage, right? Blood Rage is still... I mean, I still consider that to be a... Was it important? Yes. Okay. Um, Raiders of the North Sea, one of my favorite games of all times. Codenames, a game changer. That game was so... Everybody was playing Codenames. Everybody was playing Codenames. Yeah, I mean, I would walk down dark alleys yes. New York people. Correct. You'd be like rolling dice, but then you'd look over and somebody over here is like, uh, Gangsters 7. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Code names, right? right. Yes. Yeah. Three year olds playing code names. <laughs> My grandmother playing code names. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to see um, this stuff show up as quotes of the box. <laughs> All right. Tracarion, Cthulhu Wars, Above and Below. I mean, this is a, this one is more personal to me. Some of my favorite games came out this year, and I, and I named just about all of them. Actually, of all those, my least favorite is code names. Uh, but still a, a good game and an important game. 2015. I, I just feel like, and, and you know, I didn't get, I didn't count Viticulture there because that was the essential edition. Although, sure, sure, that's a, you know, Seven Wonders Duel is is a you know a, a really solid game still. Pandemic Legacy, right? I think a lot of people would consider it just for that game. And I haven't played like season one. I've only played season zero. I feel like standing up and walking out of the room. I've right only now. played season zero. What about zero? Risk Legacy, the actual important Legacy game? <laughs> No, because Tom told me it wasn't important. So I didn't oh play my it. word! I was, I was considering. I had the box ready to open. Tom's like, "No, that was not a, not not an important game. Not important enough for you to play." Correct. Don't, Don't waste, waste your time, your time with, with that. that. Go edit videos. Play bootleggers instead. Of what <laughs> that's what he told me. So that's why I made my list early. Play I, think we, I think we have bootleggers in the library. <laughs> we should. Yeah, I, I, like do. I, I like do. it too. It's just not an important. Someone in the game. chat said they just sold it yesterday for five bucks. That person got a heck of a deal. Is all I gotta say. <laughs> That's right, 2015, You're my fine. number seven. You don't need bootleg. <laughs> All right, what do you got, Z? All right, what am I looking at? What year am I looking at here? Is it still 2015? And I don't seven. know if changed this. The number seven. No, my number seven is uh, 1999. Ooh. In 1999, party. we had Raw. Raw. Yeah. Raw. Ooh, did you see count. the new tiles for Raw on BGG? I, oh no. my gosh. Ra oh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. <gasps> is Ra even available, though? Huh? Ra's not available. But I have it. <laughs> I don't care if it's available yeah, or not. That's true. Right. It just seems weird. Like They would be like coming out with updated bits for Go. It's like, well, nobody has it. <laughs> if mean, I like, put those tiles in my game, I will change it from a 6.5 to a 7.5. Make it happen. Yeah, I love Shallow, Ra. shallow, man. Mm. I am super shallow. Yep. Ra, Tecal, Lost Cities, mm -hmm. Torres, Shot and Totten. Yeah. Which is Battle Line, basically. Right. So I just named a bunch of games, and that's literally all of those titles are only from Canizia and Kramer and Keesling. Which is insane. The Alea games were hopping around this time. You didn't mention Apples to Apples. Apples sure. to Apples. That I was getting party to it. I was getting to it. Apples to Apples. <laughs> it's not on your list. You lie. You be quiet. Um, <laughs> Let me look. Ricochet Robots. And, of course, Time's Up. Everybody mm. knows Time's Up. But this was like, you know, I didn't even think about that. That's a double punch for, it is for party, party games. games. Time's Up and Apples to Apples? Yeah. My I mean, word. Apples to Apples is super popular today. It's just been Insanely called 15 different things, too. I mean, Apples to Apples has basically been rethemed a hundred times. Sure. I mean, most yeah, party games actual, now, like, take it. Oh, right. you have the judge pick your card? Yeah. That's a big it, deal. It That's is. a huge thing. That's like, that accounts for 40% of game, right. uh, party <laughs> games. Party games, yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And now Time's Up was based on a... On an existing yeah, you know, like a power game, yeah, 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 but right. it took it and it was extremely popular. Yes, yeah, no, it's a solid year. This is, I mean, just with the Kinesia and Kramer Kiesling games, like yeah. you said, enough. And a lot of games that did make a big impact and sort of again changed the way things were going to go. And there's right. the first Commands and Colors game came out, Battle Cry. Yeah. yeah. There's also things like Money from mm -hmm. Kinesia. Yeah. Nobody cares about that. Right. Nor should you. Even some, you know, Uno Attack. Spotter. Uno Attack is hot garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a solid year. I didn't realize Lost Cities and Shot and Totten came out the same year. <laughs> Canizia's designs and spurs, you know, yeah, spurs. So yeah, it's yeah. like, I'm in a tile laying mode. Here's three of them. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. And it's a all... hack. I mean, I don't want to say, uh, I don't want to <laughs> mince words here. Hello, Dr. Canizia? <laughs> <laughs> Are we on? We're on seven now, right? Seven. All right. Uh, My number seven, huh, I didn't mean for this to happen, is 2007. Uh, you already mentioned 2007, oh, I right? I, I was my number 10, yes. That was your number 10? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like 2007. Again, Agricola 
was where Kickstarter was not out yet, but mm-hmm. it was almost like the first Kickstarter because Zeb took pre-orders right. and people went crazy over it. This, mm-hmm. I mean, I gotta stop kicking Mike. <laughs> Tom, uh, Tom is severely injuring me. Uh, I'll take, uh, here, I'll get take my shoes off. So if I do kick oh, you, it's that'll less, help. It's less problem. will be injured in a different way. <laughs> Anyhow, Agricola, huge deal. <laughs> people were rushing to get this race for the galaxy. Yes. Blew people's minds. Galaxy Trucker put CGE on the map. Mm-hmm. Not a company a lot of people knew on Vladik Vato. Brass was a slow burn. Mm-hmm. All right, Brass is definitely. I'd say Brass is almost more popular now than it was. Uh, I agree. Sure. I, it yeah. is. Kingsburg, Jamaica, yeah. Biblios. Last Night on Earth, a zombie game brought um, Twilight Frog. Crate, not Twilight, Frying Frog Flying to the forefront. Frog, yeah. um, Notre Dame was one of the games that kind of really put Feld up there. I know it really Burgundy did. was no, a thing. No, it but, did, it did yeah. for sure. And in the year of the dragon. I'm not oh, a fan of one sure. to play either. Age of Empires 3 showed us that Glenn Drover could design more than just big miniature games. Right. Um, 1960. Coliseum, Again, maybe. Z-Man was kind of in full swing at this point in time. They mm-hmm. were coming around that corner. <laughs> um, Coliseum, Days of Wonder was producing other stuff, although that game wasn't as popular as others. But yeah, that's another. Oh, and Red game. Dragon Ang put Slugfest games on the map. Fantasy Flight did I, one of their last coffin-sized boxes with StarCraft, the board game. Yeah, the one game that invented deck building, I might add. Starcraft, yeah. No. <laughs> Ish. No, okay. I don't want to say that Dominion is a ripoff of Starcraft. Mm. But Dominion's a ripoff of Starcraft. Anyway, very mm. powerful year 2007. All right, so a sl- I, I, only a slight spoiler if you've been paying close attention and taking notes of everything that I've done, and I know I many of been. you are doing that. Yes. Taking notes. There will be a quiz That's after correct. the stop this is This is also going to be your buying list. Um, this is the only... <laughs> They're going to be buying years? Correct. Bootleggers, I'm telling you right now, is on the hotness of BGG. I'm just telling you that. <laughs> it's it a shot right at number one. Now. Trending Come up. on, folks, make it happen. <laughs> the prices are trending up. <laughs> All right, it's like cryptocurrency. All right, this is the only time that I've got two years back to back. So my number seven was 2015. My number six is 2014. Um, these are a lot of my favorite games here. Five. Tri- this is this is the, the this is the Cathala year. Five Tribes, Abyss. Love both of those games. Still play both of those games. Patchwork, Istanbul, Dead of Winter, Arcadia Quest, Deception, Murder in Hong Kong. My favorite party game of all time. This is a great year. I all, all of those games, except for Patchwork well, and Istanbul, are no longer in my collection, but they used to be. It's also the year of Dice Tower Essentials. It's also the year of Dice Tower Essentials. I'm going to change this to my number one. <laughs> um, no, but, but <laughs> what, a, what a year, man. I mean, what a year. Uh, Port Royal. I absolutely adore Port Royal. Deep Sea Adventure I like. Um, I just listed the ones that were the most important to me, but Man, Deus, which I know you love, Z. That's another solid mm-hmm. game. But mm-hmm. class, put your hand under the table. <laughs> put your hand under. The, yeah, I, I, I I'm do. not going to repeat the whole I catchphrase. Actually, there. I actually have class. And what the number one there is Splendor. I don't particularly love Splendor, but I understand its importance, right? Yeah. It's still, it's still something that's played uh, today. So this is just a really, really spectacular year. I'll spoil her. This one did not make my list. Not no. even because it's a bad year. It's a very good year. Yeah. It's because it, in this time frame, I didn't want to make my list 20. 11 to 2020. Yeah, it's, uh, it's true. To, uh, um, but this is this. I think the years right around it were just slightly yeah, stronger. I get you. And, and I did something similar with with yeah with recent years. So yeah. Hmm. Z, you're not saying much. I think this may end up on your list at some point. You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. Uh-huh. You just said you don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know uh-huh. what I'm talking about. All right, my number six pick is 2008. The oh. best year. Pandemic is on this bad boy. Mm-hmm. Actually, I'm shocked that this is as low am, on your list. I thought this I am, would be your one, maybe. I, I, see, I, see, I, I showed that this some. Is this low on your I list. showed some sort of, you know, not just being like, well, I really like the games. I don't care about the impact. So I tried. The impact of pandemic is undeniable. Oh, I mean, it is. Cr- well, and then I, I, I'm going to keep my mouth shut because I'll have things to say about this later. <laughs> Mike Pandemic. Don't ever watch Hello? a movie with Mike. <laughs> Pandemic, Dixit, <laughs> Dominion, of course. Yeah. Uh, a couple of others that I think were, were 
really neat. Ghost Stories came out the same mm -hmm. year as Pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's a one-two punch for making uh, co-ops popular, I'll games. tell you. I mean, Monopoly, and deal. And then Cosmic Encounter, the FFG edition, mm -hmm. came out this year, which... Definitely, again, was like the delu the version of Cosmic. Right. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bunch of other stuff I didn't write down. Battlestar was very popular. Stone Age is, I think, a game that brought a lot of people into uh, <clears throat> worker placement. Uh, I know you like that. Uh, the Harbor game. <laughs> Lauv. <laughs> Uh, what else uh, came out here? Roy, uh, Roy Kennedy is shouting Battlestar at us from the from behind the screen here. Yeah, said. whatever. Oh, did you? Okay. I did. Say Anything was uh, the follow-up to Wits and Wagers yeah. sure. from North Star. Mm -hmm. It was like their second, like, here we go. Can we make another different game? Right. It was definitely not nearly as big, but I think it's a good game. Sure. I think they managed to do it. Um, sorry, sliders. Who can forget that? <laughs> That's actually supposed That's to be a, a decent game. version. Of, it's, a, it's a more I was of a not being game. sarcastical. Yeah. No one can tell. I'm sorry, <laughs> sliders. <laughs> anyway, no. I mean, again, I think um, in my weird mix here of games that, uh, of games that are important to me and I think are good games, mm -hmm. was just a, a year that had good games come out. Okay, yeah, sure. Not necessarily like important ones. Between you know somewhere in between of those two things, which is where I'm kind of landing on this uh, page, this uh, top ten, I think 2008 is in the discussion. No matter which way I lean, yeah, with for Dominion sure. and Pandemic in there, it's got to be in there somewhere. Right. I know it's going to be higher on both of your lists. Yes. You and don't know that. You don't know one. me. It's Roy's right. number one and Chrissy's number three. My number. What year are we on? We're, we're number I don't six. know what year we're on, but it's number six. <laughs> we're number six. Oh, okay, then. All right. My number six is 2005. Mm. All right, just a couple of years before Z's. 2005 brought Twilight Struggle, which took wargaming of sorts and brought it to the masses. Mm. It also, um, we saw the beginning of the Ticket to Ride franchise yeah. with Ticket to Ride Europe. Arkham Horror. So 2005 straight up was like Fantasy Flight. Flexing. Yeah, that's when they were. My word. Yeah. Arkham Horror. Sh uh, I mean, not Shadows of Came Out. Uh, Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition came mm -hmm. out in this year. Descent mm -hmm. came out. And Fury of Dracula, the 2nd Edition, which was so much different than the first yeah, one. Yes, Fantasy yeah. Flight, when they showed up at a convention, people were just like, ah, mm -hmm. what did I have that's new? This was sure. really their year. Yeah, it's where they're establishing their identity, really. I agree. We reprint giant games. Correct. But. But they made their... No, but it wasn't just them reprinting. They made their own... Which ones are those are not reprints? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> descent, Descent. Well, that, I know you're going to say Doom. But still... All right. Meanwhile, Shadows Over... He gave it to me. There you go. <laughs> what a goof. Shadows Over Camelot was a transitional game. It was the, the, the next big game from the... We originally had the Lord of the Rings, the first one. And sure. then we went to Pandemic, which yeah. made... That popular Shadows Over Camelot was in the middle and introduced the idea of ooh, the these games can have traitors. Yeah, yes. Um, yes. Kalos, sure. huge. This game was all I could read about on the internet for yes. some some yes. weeks. It was like, come on, I heard enough about this game, Kalos. Yeah. It was like one of those games that we got whispered about, right? It's like, yeah, yeah. Heard yeah. about Kalos? Well, Rick Thornquist, Rick Thornquist himself, I think, just brought this out and was like, ah, um, uh, Diamant. Uh, which was uh, eventually became um, Ink and Ink Gold. And Gold yeah. Glory to Rome, although no one played it in 2005. Sure. Railways of the World, which again was helping put Eagle Griffin on the map. Wits and Wagers, man, you went right over Wits and Wagers. Mm -hmm. I did not mean to go Wits and Wagers. Yeah, North Star. Although at the time Wits and Wagers came out, they were working with Eagle Griffin at the time. <laughs> they were like a subset of that one. Um, Nexus Ops. Made us realize that the new Hasbro games weren't that bad. Yeah, this was yeah. a pretty solid mm -hmm. one. Actually, they got Avalon Hill. They, they made a couple of good ones, yeah. Fantasy yep. Fight continues to reprint things with Roombound 2nd Edition. <laughs> 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 and Vegas Showdown. That's another and, one from uh, Hasbro. Lord of the Rings The Confrontation was a reprint, I yeah. think, at that point. Hmm. Uh, Unless that was the original no, one. No, that's the original, original one that came I'm out. I'm going to say they reprinted it. Okay? It's a reprint. There's World of Warcraft, the board game. Again, Fantasy Flight, they were just they really shooting were out power. huge yeah, games. Yeah. Yep. This was, I huh. missed 2005 Fantasy Flight. They were just cool. Just, but it was yeah. also the year that Euro games, again, were just piling into America. There was a lot of great things. 2005 was a transitional year. I was, 
already in the hobby, but at this point, I was just like slathering. I'm yeah. glad for my own pocketbook that Kickstarter did not exist in 2005. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah, that was a good one. That's a good pick. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, Matt gave us a super chat. Says, "Dear Tom, you're one year too late. 2004 had Blue Moon. Ask Z. Actually, many years have Blue Moons. Uh, I looked it up. It blue comes. Moon. It comes across in a certain time. It's not capitalized. This wow. game is much better than a three. Tom mm -hmm. is out of his mind. If you keep talking, it's going to a two. <laughs> My number five. <laughs> so." Um, this is, my, I'm just going to cut to the chase. My number five is 2020. And this is, this is where I was going to talk about. He's already about, super defensive. This, no, this is where I was going to talk about um, this idea of it's really going to take a few years to, to determine. I think this is going to go higher for me. I honestly do. I think that 2020 is one of the best years of gaming. Wait, let me put this on just so I can ever. take them off again. I think one it may come up higher. Look at, the, look, look at these games. Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, Dune Imperium, Dwellings of Eldervale, my number one game of all time, Marvel United, Viscounts of the West Kingdom, Beyond the Sun, Monumental, Mezzo. I absolutely love all of those games. I think this is going to potentially go higher. I didn't put it higher because it's too new. 2020. 2020. Yes, that's right. Drop them again. You didn't make enough of an effect. This... I'm telling you, I'm sorry. This, I'm not sorry. This is a great, great year. The All only right. reason it's not higher is because, like you said, I think more time needs to pass to also, really put it within the history. COVID. Well, come on now. You, that's not fair. That's honestly not fair. That it's does have a, nothing that, that to do. Still affects, yes, it does affect the year. Nothing to do with the games that were produced. The fact that yeah, people couldn't true. get together to play the games does not say anything about their design quality, their innovation. Yeah, if anything. The year did not take a big hit because of COVID. Yeah, right. that's that's true. Yeah. You know, it's I'm, actually like to be praised even more that yeah. great games came out when folks could have just pumped to the brakes and, and, and not heard and, and not right. got any backlash about it. And that's a really good point. Uh, honestly, to, to bring COVID into it, thank goodness it was such a great year because we still had yeah. so much to talk about, so much to to consider and, and some of us be able to play, you know, uh, you know, what even if it was through TTS or whatever the case may be. Just an amazing year. Sure, I didn't games. put it on the list only because I would like a few more years to look back at it. Because I, I think almost every year is amazing. Directly after. I, and I am a cult of the new gamer. I used to be like Mike, yes. is what I'm trying to say. I get it. I used, and to, I, used to like Blue Moon. <laughs> you, used to, you used to have taste. I, I like newer games. I, part of the joy of gaming for me is this discovery, the, the, new, the newness. I get that about myself, and hopefully I express that well to you so you can keep that into account. Actually, when you someone there mentions, Jamie, and this is true, and again, in a few solo years. Solo play. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that, man. Yeah. Stole my bit. 2020, mm -hmm. the pivotal year for solo games, I really agree on that. So, I yeah. mean, even I was playing solo games in 2020. Absolutely. So, yeah, no, I, I, I just absolutely think 2020 is an amazing year. An amazing year. You know what, Mike? I'm convinced. 2020 for me. Put it down, people. Is my number five. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's 2003. Hmm. The new 2020. Ah. 2003 had a lot of games that came out. Many of them were good games. <laughs> In conclusion, <laughs> games were good. Alhambra was a game that was good. Hey, uh -huh. that's my fish. Tom loved it. From Mayfair mm -hmm. back then. Colorado. Which led to Zuloretto yeah. eventually being a big award winner. Michael Schott was doing his thing around this Colorado's time. Colorado's a great game. It really is. Uh, Canizia was still kicking, as you mm -hmm. see there, Amun Ray, and, and the castle, castle was his. Yep. Fearsome Floors is actually one I wrote down. I know it's not Power Grid, but I like it sure. so much better. Yes. And I think it's a great game from uh, from Friedman Freeze. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually most of the ones I wrote. The Inch, Inch, too, yeah. the Inch I wrote was mm -hmm. the first one I wrote because mm -hmm. I really like that series, yeah. and I think this is the best game in that series. We've right. been joking a lot back and forth about you know how high and low things are. This is the first one that I highly disagree with. I think 2003 yeah, game, is one of the worst years. It's definitely in, not the, in the 2000s. Interesting. It's I mean, not on my list. I no. mean, if, if Alhambra is the most played game, and I like Alhambra, right. and Hands My Fish in Colorado, and then after that, you're like, I go down here, I'm like. Yeah, what am I? Yeah, There's this, just not much. This like, a eh. for, this I like a, a lot of these me. games, though. Um, mm. A lot of these games I do like, I do think are interesting and 
You like that R Eco game? I do. I think that's a great game, and that mm -hmm. was one of those games that they brought uh, that uh, Z Man yeah. was bringing from Japan. Oh, I Duel think of that's Ages. the best one. Wait, Duel yeah. of Ages came out there. Yeah, I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Duel of Ages said one world spanner was revolutionary. <laughs> you had, you had, uh, Way better. Go back too. up. What, what do you rate that, Tom? I'm Which curious. one? Look at that, 9.5. 9.5. Well, no, no, no. It's definitely not 9.5. It's probably an 8.5. I need to change it right now. All right, I will. Yeah. Yeah, this this, this is not my year, but, but I, you know. Good. Now go find Blue Moon. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, Michael Schott also did Industria this year. He was really at the top of his game around this time. Mm. Like early 2000s. 2003, 2004, 2005. Like right around that window. He was coming out with all the games, man. Mm -hmm. Hansa came out, and Industria, and the Colorado, and and then that kind of peaked actually with Zuloretto yeah. in what 2008 or nine or whatever yeah. it was. And then after that, he just started kind of making games. Yeah, and then Aquaretto wasn't very big. Yeah, it just sort of like plateaued after that. But yeah. for a while there, he was that designer that I was. Just if I saw his name on a game, right? I was like, wow, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So. Um, I don't know. I think it was a it was a a good year of gaming. I think there's a lot of uh, interesting stuff. By the in way, there. people are noticing I'm pre-ordering a lot of games. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's that's back before board game. I just haven't changed yet. Back before board game, you get a lot of tags. I put a lot of expansions as pre-ordered because when I want to look how many games I had, I didn't want the expansions to affect it. Got it. I so. still do weird stuff like that on mine. I really wish BGG like if there's one thing I would ask them to do is to allow that section there where it says pre-owned, pre-owned, pre-ordered to give me like one or two that I can just make up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A it's custom. always like, you know, so so I, I do that all the time where I, I use like, uh, you know, one to buy. Right, right. One to sell, one to what I just use that as tags right. and they mean whatever I want them to mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Get on it, okay? That's Next right. top ten list. Ten things BGG's got to get on. We're on number five here, right? Yes, number five. No? Nobody? Okay. Number five. <clears throat> All right, my number five is much newer. Someone's already mentioned it, I think, and that's 2015. That was you. All right, it was my number seven. Yes, number 2015 mm -hmm. is just an amazing year. Mm -hmm. um, Code Names itself, huge game, one of those defining games that comes out every yeah. four or five years. Mm -hmm. Pandemic Legacy Season 1, the game that put Legacy games on the map. Um, Blood Rage put Eric Lang on the map, put Simon on the map, that because before Blood Rage, Simon was mostly zombie side and right. miniatures were yeah. fans of it. Sure, sure. Blood Rage brought the board gamers in. Yes. Yes. And also, I will say Blood Rage is the game that made thousands upon thousands of board gamers suddenly want to start painting. That's true. Before 2015, I didn't <laughs> see board gamers talk about painting very yeah. much. Yeah. Nowadays, everyone's like, ah! Oh! How do I paint? Yeah, that's yeah, probably back things to paint them. Never mind the game. That's right. a big. That's a phenomenon that came around that time. Right. This is yeah, probably the the the, not the first, but the biggest kind of hybrid. Now there's a, so, sure. I would say almost most games nowadays seem to be hybrid in style. And Blood Rage, I think, is the one that really pushed that, uh, the popularity of that. Then there's Time Stories, and I've dropped my rating of Time Stories, sure. but it's a huge impact. And yeah. the biggest impact from Time Stories is, I want to say, the Exit and Escape Room games. Yes. Yeah, for, That yeah, was for the sure. thing that put them on. Mm -hmm. um, through the Ages. Through the Ages, though, was before 2015. Yeah, yeah, um, this was the, the reprint the of it. Yeah, Exploding Kittens, yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a fan of the game, it's but important, though. definitely out rating? there. What do you rate it? I haven't played it. I just read the, 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 Better how the rules. Better be lower than Blue Moon. And Raiders of the North Sea, which mm -hmm. Mike said, that's the game that put Garfield games on the map. Yes. I know this wasn't his first one, no, but, but no one really one. heard of the of his games Ship much. Yeah. And Tiny Epic Galaxies brought a lot of prestige to that series. I know that there was already a popular series, but this was the game no, that people really that's liked. That's the one. Yeah, that's when most people talk about Tiny Epic, that's the game they talk Champions about. Champions of Midgard put no, uh, uh, Gray Fox, Fox on the map. Potion Explosion was a really big hit for a while. Mm -hmm. This was a strong Food Chain Magnate is also something to consider because yeah. that's one of those games that made a lot of people go back like play that game right and then go back and play some of their older games right sure like nobody was looking at duck dealer no. or whatever we had bus this, on one you know, of the right? years that we talked yeah, about bus. i mean nobody yeah. was looking at these games right but food and chain magnate was like i don't want to call it a crossover hit but almost it's close it got enough come. people it's as close as they're gonna get yeah, yeah. 
uh, to go back and be like, well, let me see what else, uh, what is it, Splatter? Yep. Splatter. Spelling has done, yeah. yeah. You got the Grizzled in there. and yeah. Above and Below is also a game, I think, that put Red Raven yeah. games on, the, on a big, I mean, again, Ryan Lockett had other games before yes. this, but he was kind of a niche, small guy. He still is niche. But now, Above and Below, people yeah. really liked it. And then mm-hmm. after that, Near and Far and stuff, you know. It's also a nice, you know, he brought in that narrative that, that's also become more and more popular in gaming. The mm-hmm. Gallerist mm-hmm. was one of the big, giant games from mm-hmm. Lacerda, which became a thing after this point. Sure. So, yeah, there's a lot Big of year. a lot of Big cool year. games that came out. This was, to me, a pretty solid year. Yep. All right, my number four is a crossover, but I don't remember with who. It's with Tom. It may not be, actually. I'm not sure if it is, Z. Does it start with 19? Because if it it is, it's it's with Z. It is not. Uh, My number four is 2010. Uh, 2010, and and this is why I was talking it's with about Tom. Yeah, this. Th- I mean, the the games I wrote down: uh, Seven Wonders, Dominant Species. I even wrote Fresco. I, I really still have some affection for that game. Hanabi, Forbidden Island, and then some of my personal favorites, which are not up in the top. Radis. I absolutely love Radis. Is Ex- Radis only 2010? I thought it was earlier than that. Uh, that's what it's listed on BGG. Yeah, 2010. Um, right. Expedition Northwest Passage is a game I liked. Morty Morosa, that really unique one where you're driving. Look, I get. It, but it's game edition Northwest Passage. You're talking about that in greatest years of gaming. No, it's down on the list. But it, I, just for the other ones are the biggest things. But I, like, like, like I said, I put some of my favorites on here too. It's my list. You're not allowed to have your own <laughs> thoughts. But really, honestly, you know, with with that with those top few there, Seven Wonders, Dominant Species, Hanabi, Fridden Island. I mean, that's uh, that's it's a good year. Untouchable. I, I, I really, don't, I, I mean, don't disagree. Yeah, because it's on your list. Correct. That's how that works. Yeah, I mean, fine. <laughs> Even Twa is very well regarded by a lot of people. I it's you know, Troyes. Troyes. I'm, I'm going to make a prediction now that nobody's number one will not be a crossover. You're I don't know, Tom. Right. I feel like my number one might not be a crossover with anybody. Really? Interesting. Maybe you guys are a bunch of jerks. <laughs> wow. Well, he did put 2003 on his list, Tom. Keep that. Well, up. my number one will also be 2003. That's how I know. He crossed over with himself. That's how I what? do it. It's that good. Mm. Anyway, I think my number four you will be happy with because it's a three-way crossover. Ooh. It's 2015. Yeah, it's a great year. 2015, you guys already have said it, so I won't uh, belabor the, the point here. But, yeah, the whole, you know, uh, Blood Rage. And, uh, I, you know, I'll talk about some of the other ones, like Time Stories I wrote. Um, but, like, some of my favorites, Automania came out that year. Mm. And I think that was a big, that was the first big box game that I remember. From, uh, help me out here. What's the name Artipia? of that company? Artipia. No. Yes. No, not Artipia. No, uh, the other one that sounds like them. Um. <laughs> hang on, I haven't got the Automania on the list here. Uh, you yet. have to go way lower because of that cover. Where is Automania? I cannot remember the name of the company, but anyway, that company. I love that company. Ar- Arcana? No. Artana. No. <laughs> Are you sure it's not Artipia? I thought it was Artipia. I don't remember. Just look it up. <laughs> I'm looking. Anyway, Automania and a lot of the games that they've come out with after, I think, are... Aporta. Aporta, 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 Aporta games. games. There we go. Thank you, the Mr. E. They're going to change their name to Sweet, mm-hmm. to something memorable. They need to change the cover to something memorable, too. But For uh, uh, Automania? I know yeah. You're just such a hater of the Automania cover. I do not like cover. that cover, man. I Oof. like it a lot. Oof. Again, I think they've gotten a lot better at putting out, uh, continuing to put out small games, which they still do. Mm-hmm. They're good and interesting. But they're big game productions now. Yeah, they're getting you know? really solid. They're putting out some really interesting stuff. Like, mm-hmm. in the Euro game sphere, they're always a company to watch for me. Yeah. And this is one of the first ones that was like, Look what we can do. Mm-hmm. We can make a game that's interesting, that's engaging, and very simple. And mm-hmm. we do it with our own flair. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, going all the way to the one that was not a hit, the oil drilling one. The... Oh, the one that we played? That, yeah, the yeah, one that, that we was played, a really good offshore. That. that was a really offshore, good that's game. It. That's a good it's call. It's you look at it and you go, yeah. this is off the beaten path. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. clever. This interesting pseudo, like you got to work with other people. So there was yeah, this we need little to play bit of cooperation. It's a good game. Yeah, they're a good company. Yeah. So, anyway, Shakespeare came out that year from Astari. That was mm-hmm. kind of like they were basically. Yeah, it's on my list right now. Yeah. Another thing I have to point out 
This was the year I was looking at this Risk Star Wars edition. Remember how many Star Wars games came out that year? Because that was when the new movies oh, came that's out. that's right. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. took a field trip to Target to look at all the new <laughs> Star Wars games. Field trip to Target. We Remember did. That. I was like, you let's go on a field trip. That, no, because no. you were in the car. No, I don't think so. <laughs> was Jason there? No. I oh, feel wait. like the one time Jason wait, stood behind the X-Wing thing and I took a picture of him through the... Remember He that? did. He met us there, I remember now. Ah. All right. Now it all comes clear. Nah, that's why I... All right, my number four. We're on number fours, right? Is Older Than That's 2008. This has been on someone's list. It was on Z's list. No, it was on yours. 2008 oh, was on this on Z's yours? list. 2008 is amazing. Mm -hmm. the, the, the one, two, three punch of Pandemic Dominion dicks it. That's a huge deal. Yeah. Dixit took party games. Remember, I was on my Apple's Apples. Everyone copies it. Dixit was another one with yep. the whole mysterious communication type thing mm, and yes, the big time. funky cards. Dominion, of course, whole genre. Pandemic. Yes, there were Shadows Over Camelot and Lord of the Rings, but Pandemic put cooperative games a whole on genre the map. Too, yeah, yeah. Right. absolutely. Uh, then Battlestar Galactica, which was the game. Shadows Over Camelot was one I liked a lot. Battlestar Galactica took the whole. We can take a social deduction game and make it huge. Right. Make it really long. Yeah. Right. Make it way too long. Yeah. Sure, but it was very, very popular. Make it over. It was long. also one of the first really good IP, IP games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's too long. <laughs> Cosmic Encounter. Mm -hmm. The reprint. Lahav, of course, my favorite game, but mm -hmm. that's not why I put this on the list. Love. Ghost Stories. Formula D was brought back by Asmodee. 2008 was the year I noticed Asmodee becoming a fairly large company. And before that, they were pretty mm. small. That sounds yeah, about Formula right. Formula D, yeah. around the time, Formula D and the reprint that they did of um, Snow Tales. Oh. Yes. When yeah. they did the, those two games, when yeah. those two came out, I was like, oh, Asmodee and mm. Claustrophobia. Yeah. The original Claustrophobia was from them. Yeah, they had a 20 by 20 booth yeah, at a convention, and company. I was like, oh, wow, this company yeah, has they're, a they're, lot of games now. Yeah. I, it never occurred to me they'd be where they are now. Sure. It's so weird. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of cool games that came out this year, but just the top 10, it's such a strong year for that. So It is. 20, 2008. Hmm. All right, my number three is a crossover with uh, Tom, I believe. It is 2018. Man, there's You some... are cult of the Oh, new. my gosh. But these <laughs> games are so good. Oh, my gosh. Look at these games. You've got Root, which I think is one of the best designs in, in, in recent history. Rising Sun, Nemesis, Everdell, Architects of the West Kingdom, Lords of Hellas, City of Kings, Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea, Wildlands, which is a vastly underrated game, Smartphone Inc., one of my favorite games. So many of my games in my top 20 come from this year. And, and I think enough time has passed. I think these games are going to continue to be played. I agree. That's why I was also played. on my list. Uh, that's right. Oh, um, right. It, it's <laughs> just a fantastic year. I mean, even the games that I haven't mentioned that aren't necessarily my personal favorites, I think are still rock-solid games. This is a really, really strong year. Um, you know, these are games that are still being discussed today. They're still, you know, I, mean, I know it's only been a couple Again, of few I years. So, but, but well, yes. Well, but... The nature of board gaming now That's is that true. you know games can be super hot and then they're gone in a Maybe month. Maybe a better or two. way to put this is if we opened the library up right now, yes, people would be running for Root and Everdell and Brass. They right. would be. They would be. Absolutely. And that's pretty. That doesn't happen for most games that are yeah. three years old. Yeah. No, you're right. And the, I mean, these are just really, really good games. Really good. And Chris makes a good point here. This year had a lot of the types of games that I like. It had a lot of these kind of you know, hybrid style games with, you know, right. the, the the interaction points that you might find in the Ameritrash games, but the Euro mechanisms to tie it all down. And and that's a really good point, Chris. Uh, it, it, a lot of my style of Stick games. Stick around, Chris. I'm going to need your help momentarily. That's right. Uh, this is really good. This is a great year, and, and I agree with Tom on it. Just slightly more. Z? My year, uh, my number three, right, is what we're looking at, is the year three. that we're still definitely talking about. People just are still talking about these games because it's, you know, <laughs> 2019. Woo! Wow. Okay. Who's called to the new now? Still you. I know. So, well, <laughs> the only reason I didn't Still put you. 2019 they on get, my list is because it was because I put 2020 on my list. This is my number 11. Well, they're getting more recent actually yeah. for me. My okay. number uh, two and my number one. Well, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yes. 2019 is a great. 2021 year. has been so good so far. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, okay, so it's yes, this year. is on here because I think there's a lot of games I like. There's Wingspan, of course. Sure. Okay, Huge that one's game. like mm -hmm. that one's on there, and then the crew is there, which mm -hmm. I didn't even write. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the games I wrote because I like them. As Atlantis Rising got its second edition. It's really a, basically a new game. Yeah. Black Angel, I think, is a fantastic game. Claustrophobia 1643 was a big Kickstarter that I, again, think is one of the absolute best dudes on a map kind of games. Cthulhu Death May Die is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Detective City of Angels, very good evolution of that whole, you know, detective uh, modern crime board game and Chronicles of Crime and all of that stuff. With a lot of flavor, a lot of theme in it. Mm -hmm. Imperial Settlers Empires of the North took that series, evolved it, changed it into something new. It was a slam dunk, in my opinion. I think it's a strong year. Um, I don't know if it was what Tom would consider a revolutionary year, but I think it was a really good year. I really, I, I really need to see this year in a lens. I mean, Wingspan yeah. is and the crew are really strong games. Yeah. Um, yeah, this this was right right on the fringes. Honestly, it's because I put 2020 on my list that I didn't put 2019 on my list. I wouldn't argue with putting this on anyone's list. It's a great slate of games. It just is. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back I, again. I'm gonna see how this For is sure. in a few For years. Yeah, yeah. Soon. but it's close. I mean, wait, mm -hmm. I don't know. My list. I'm gonna go back just a few years before that though, and it's 2016. Mm. 2016, a really strong year, and I'm mm. going to be really shocked if this is not on Mike's list because I think this might even be his number one. Um, and that's because Scythe's in this year. But the, the, the one-two punch of Terraforming Mars Scythe, really strong. King Domino, a very successful, I mean, I don't really care for it, but a very successful Spiel des Jahres. Great Western Trail. This was a good year to be a Euro gamer, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Clank changed deck building and brought something new to the scene. Mm -hmm. Arkham Horror, the card game, to, until this year, the most successful popular, card yeah. game, popular, really well. Mm -hmm. uh, Santorini proved that abstract games could still be popular. Star Wars Rebellion, Mansion Madness Second Edition. This was the last hurrah, in my opinion, of Fantasy Flight mm -hmm. 2016. They were still doing some cool things. And then again, there's more stuff down here at the bottom. Mechs vs. Minions, I really think that changed games. That blew our minds would not blow our minds in 2021. No, it would I would still think it was really neat. Yeah. yeah. But it would not blow my mind the same way it did. At this point, there was nothing like that except for the Lord of the Rings Deluxe Edition, which cost $500. Yes. I'm going to spoil. This is not on my list. And the reason why, Tom, is I think this, this year is remarkably top-heavy. Uh, of course I love Scythe. I think King Domino is an amazing design. Terraforming Mar Mars is not my favorite, but I appreciate how good of a design it is. But there's a lot of games beyond that that I just think are okay. This is not on my list. Wow. All right. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is your 2003. Correct. Yes. Yeah. I'm not moment. saying it's a bad year, but this it, is it, such it, a strong year. Yeah. My word. It's the good. Exit Game showed up this I'm year. I'm a huge fan of that. Ice Cool. That's a big deal, though. Ice Cool is really popular. Calm down. I was not being. I was being sarcastic. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Cottage Garden started off the whole polyomino thing. No. It made it popular. Yes. Patchwork was before. Cottage Garden, but this did it in a He's being multiplayer louder, thing. So I have to go <laughs> Doctor Canizia, hello. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> what year, Doctor <laughs> Canizia, are you calling? Are you calling 2020? <laughs> he, is, he is beyond time and space. Time. <laughs> oh, uh, it doesn't an extra dimensional <laughs> being. <laughs> Anyhow, I really um, think this is a strong year. It I, is a good year. It's not on my list. Oh, really? Gosh. That's a, yeah. that's unbelievable to me. This I'm is such a, a good Mike year. Wrong, Mike Boo. I don't care. Let's keep rain going. your hate upon me. <laughs> oh, please do. I enjoy that actually. <laughs> Right. I'm still waiting for you to pull like a Z and be like, actually, 2016 is. Here's this is this is the year I think will not be on anyone else's list. Okay, go um, challenge accepted. And it's and, and it's my number two. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm wondering maybe I could have put it back. It's it's a really good year. 2012. 2012 is my number two. And the and the games that I put down were Zolkin, Robinson Crusoe, Lords of Waterdeep, Keyflower, Kemet, Targi. 
Seasons. Love Letter, which was a hugely important game and a game that I still play. Uh, yes. Freedom the Underground Railroad. Tokaido. A lot of games that I have real... I feel like this is a year that isn't top-heavy, to, to use the opposite example. This is a year that maybe doesn't have those incredible mind-blowing games, but it is such a consistent year. There are so many games that I still hold in really high esteem that that's why it made my list this high. Um, it doesn't have kind of the, the, the flashy games, but it has games that I feel like are, are designs that are still really, even Coup that I didn't put on my list. I think that's an important game, uh, a game that, that I, I think made a big impact in the hobby. So uh, I think this is my, my dark horse choice of this list, and I will be surprised if it's on either of your lists. It's no, not on my list. Okay, yeah. It's a good year. I mean, mm -hmm. Lords of Waterdeep alone would have probably made me consider it, yeah. but if I, was, if I had been thinking about the list slightly differently, I would really don't like Lords of Waterdeep that yeah. much, so... Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if it makes you happy, you can switch this out with my 2003. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. No, I do, That makes me very happy I do happy think indeed. this is a very solid year. You can say I, that about any year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was one that I picked because of the consistency. I just think that there are more really good games and not one or two just amazing mind blowers. I get, I get that. I yeah. get that. All right, Jay, what do you got? My number two is a crossover at this point with Mike. I don't think you've said it. 2014 mm -hmm. was the year of Bruno Catala. It was, for sure. Undeniably so. He designed Abyss, Five Tribes. I'm going to say he designed San Juan 2nd Edition. <laughs> Doesn't make it I'm going to say the man made Istanbul. That's right. Deep Sea Adventure, <gasps> Katala. Katala. Mm -hmm. Dead of Winter, the Katala Edition. Mm -hmm. You would play Very that extra. That would be a great game. Yes. Um, Deception Murder in Hong Kong. The uh, the deep sea adventure thing actually is definitely what put Oink on the map. Oh, no question. I mean, they, they had games, but... Mm -hmm. Like now, people can you, you can, can tell somebody you can tell a gamer like, "Are you into Oink games?" and yep. they know what that is. Yep. Because of deep, deep sea adventure, I'm sorry. That's that's why. It's very. You don't think it was fake artist? No, no. no. It's definitely deep sea adventure. No, fake artist was already when they were hip. Right. And fake artist is is also popular. That's another one you can get at Target. Those those are probably their two and insider are their two biggies. You know. Sure. So well, they have a um, lot of garbage games, frankly. Sure, they do. But yeah, Onitama was that year again. Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, the, the Dice Tower Essentials. Yeah. It Dice wasn't. Tower Essentials. It wasn't Dice Tower Essentials in 2014. No, it was no, a little right. Japanese game. We played game. Though, yeah. the yeah. original one that mm -hmm. year. Uh, a couple of things just for me. Deus, yes. Deus is one of my favorite games. I think yeah. it's a fantastic design. And uh, Onirim Second Edition came out that year also, mm -hmm. Even which Alchemist. kicked off kicked off that series really because yeah. they kind of had a false start. Where they came out with the original, and they came out with a sequel, mm -hmm. little card games, Urban okay? On, yeah. And then they sort of scrapped that and came out with a slightly bigger one, second edition line, and that's had, what, five more games in yes. that line. Interestingly, the second one in the original, you know, shot hasn't even come back. Yeah, Urbion never got re-released. Yeah, just yeah. they've never touched that one mm -hmm. again. It is the weakest of them all. There's been rumblings they're reworking it, but whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do think it's a strong year, and it was just a really good year for me. Yeah. A lot of the games that came out that year just were superb, great-looking games. You could give me a euro from this year, and I'm like, oh, yes, Istanbul is great. Yeah, Splendor. You, you can give me. Uh, <laughs> Splendor was a big deal. I don't care yeah. for it, but it was mm -hmm. a big deal. I mean, amazing dis uh, deduction games, amazing uh, trader games, like. You pick a genre, there was yeah. a big hit in that genre in this year. Yeah. Spyfall even came out that year. I don't really love That's it, but crazy, it's, an important, you know? it's an important game. Yeah. And Patchwork, let it be stated here, made Say clear. It. Say it. The first Polyominoes game from Uwe Bru Rosenberg. And Bruno Catala. And Bruno Catala. <laughs> Co-design. Co and, of course, uh, input from Canizia. <laughs> Hello. Let's move move on here. All right, my number two. <laughs> um, 2016 was actually my number two last time I did the list. It got ousted here. Well, you've done this before. Oh, you've done this list before. I've done every top ten list. No, I haven't. <laughs> wow. All right, my number two is 2017. Mm. Oh. All right, so this is not on my list. It's a strong year. 
First of all, plan B on the map, Azul. Yeah. Secondly, how are we going to argue against the powerhouse of Gloomhaven? Yeah. It seriously is that strong of a game. Yeah. A huge game. This is the biggest best-selling game. Like if you multiplied how big the game is and grandiose it is times how much it's sold, I don't think any other game comes close. Like if you made some formula to do that. Yeah, no. Like ounce for ounce, you mean? Like I'm I'm not talking about just the weight of the physical weight, but like the how much is in that game. Like there's big games out there, Kingdom right. Death Monster and you know, Tainted Grail. None of them are coming close right. to the popularity of Gloomhaven. It's cool. number one on BGG. That's mind blowing. Gloomhaven is a phenomenon. There are certain games like I I would also say Wingspan is like Gloomhaven, where you get people that have absolutely zero connection to modern hobby board gaming that become aware of it because of these games. Gloomhaven is one of those games. Sure. But then we also had this company from nowhere yeah. um, that was a leftover company. In fact, their name was Plan B. <laughs> and the one-two punch of Azul and Century Spice Road. Yeah. Holy cow. I thought Century Spice Road would be the most sold game of that year. And then I remember at, at Essen, they're like, oh yeah, we sold 2,000 copies. At one convention. Most games don't sell 2,000 copies, In period. Yeah. Right. Azul's huge. Yep. Spirit Island, very popular. I love Spirit Island. Uh, one of the most it's, popular. I mean, look at that. They're both in the was 12. was a big hit from this year. Also. It I mean, really a was. A smaller game, but a mm -hmm. big hit. Seventh Continent would have been the biggest game of the year if it just came out the same year as Gloomhaven. Yeah. Photosynthesis said, hey, Blue Orange said, hey, we can make gamer games. Yeah. Gaia Project in the top ten. That's two games in the top ten for Magic, that year. Magic Maze. Yeah, and then there's some of these other ones which I like a lot. TI Fourth Edition, and I mean these Dice Forge and stuff. Oh. They're not as big, but it was a really solid year. Anachrony, Charterstone, Dinosaur yeah. Island, Ethnos. Most of my favorites from this year what are further year. down that list. But yeah, there's there are some good games. I really like this year, near and far. Oh. I mean, I got a lot of personal favorites, but I think this was an incredibly strong year. Too many bones. Yeah. Put Chip Theory on the map. Don't say it. It's a good list. Don't say Pulsar. <laughs> Pulsar? No, I. <laughs> I, I really like the game. Um, How do you rate that game a nine? Because I really like it. Vladimir Succi, baby. That game is terrible. Fong of Love made a big splash. I mean, that's kind of that company's gone now, but yeah. for a brief moment, everyone yeah. was talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so when that's Fantasy when Realms. actually that's Fantasy Realms, Realms the, came out. That's for the up for the uh, Kenner Spiel right now. That's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's not. You could have yeah. said, say, say it like you thought of it. By the way, Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to our number ones. Ooh. I cannot tell you how much I was expecting to cross over with Z for my number one. I am so shocked that he did not pick 2008 as the number one year in board gaming. This year is ridiculous. I mean, this year is ridiculous. Dominion, Pand just with these games alone. Dominion, Pandemic, Stone Age. Do you think Age. I would pick it because, of, because there are games I like? Or no, because I think these games are some of the, the most important games in gaming and still still important, still played, still viable like games. Why would you assume this would be my number one is what I'm asking. Just well, I think pandemic, pandemic is part of it. I think it's part of it. But <laughs> if pandemic came out in a weaker year, then I wouldn't have thought so. But pandemic, which is your number one game, also came out in the same year as Dominion and Stone Age and Dixit and Ghost Stories and Keltus. The the Spiel de Jahres winner of that Did you just year. Did say Keltus? It won the Spiel, Tom. Oh! I was gonna make, but I was going to make a point about that. The point is that He's being louder. I'm sorry, the, the Spiel winner. <laughs> The Spiel winner is the one that is the least talked about of these games. I yeah. still like Keltus, but this year is ridiculous. I mean, this year is, to me, just from one to, I mean, you just keep scrolling. They're, they're okay. amazing. I, a, I'm listening. Give it like one big, like, Look at these games. The only okay, one that's kind of an go. outlier is The like Climbers is crap, Mike. <laughs> well, he scrolled all the way down to the bottom. Come My on. God. Let's see. Nefertiti's a good game, y'all. Railways of Europe is a good game. Hob and Goot's a really good game. Hob and Goot. Yeah. See, Mike has what you call taste. You wouldn't know anything about you that. You haven't rated Hob and Goot, Tom? Did you play that? Have you played Hob and Goot? I don't think so. Really? Yeah, I think you would really Hob like it, Goot. actually. Really? Do we want to go down that list here? Maybe let's, you let's... ought to not rate, uh, you know, good games low scores. Yeah, no, I mean, this is just, I mean, this is an incredible year. You it know really what, Mike? Incredible. All of these years are incredible. I'll they put it be as number list. one if it makes you happy. I, cannot, it it I cannot figure out what Z's number one is. I can't either. I really assumed this would be your number one. I also thought that. Here we go. Let me say some names, okay? Some games. Here we here. go. Here okay? we go. Hit me up. Arkham Horror, living card game. 
Scythe. So this is a crossover. You're kidding me. And other stuff I like, like the others. <laughs> this game's other not even on my, like, This year's not even on my Well, that's list. your fault. That's just bad. 2016, are you crazy? It's top heavy. Light it up, Tom. It's top heavy this year. Light it up. <laughs> It's top heavy. This Come was my on, number man. three. No, you're wrong on this, this one. This is I'm a sorry, good Mike. year. Oh. You're insane. It's a good year. It's top heavy. This was almost my number one. Wow. I really thought about this. Yes! All right. Yes! I'm happy to be the outlier <laughs> on this one. I think it's a good year, but I think it's way top heavy. I think it's a very well balanced, you know, sort of <laughs> round. Where are you getting this top heavy from? I keep going down and we haven't even hit the 500s the, yet, Mike. I think the yeah. bottom of this year feels real heavy. It's yeah. a heavy bottom. No, no, stop. stop. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah, we need to we need to like redirect right Please away. Please don't make a gif of that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's a, it's a fine year, I guess. Uh, Fortunately, it was the small. We were in the small yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I think this was a very strong year. Yeah. I do. You already talked about it, so you went you went did the whole going through the list thing. Yeah. But I mean, I this is where I'm just my book. I'm still going through the list, and there's still really good games. Mm-hmm. I. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're crazy, Mike. I'm sorry. Yeah. But you know where else Mike is crazy? <laughs> Mike is crazy for somehow saying uh-huh. that he was like, oh, I'm edgy. I'm picking 2012 I as a dark horse thing. 2012 is my number one. Wow. It's not even close, Mike. Really? This game, this year is so important. And you already okay. mentioned it. Love Letter. Yeah. The mini games. Lords of Waterdeep yeah. brought so many people from Dungeons & Dragons into board gaming. Terra Mystica, everyone loves a Euro game. Coup. Made indie boards and cards a lot of money. Robs and Crusoe put I mean, Ignacy cool. Trevichek. I don't think it was published from them this year, but okay. Sure, but it came yeah. out and did it then. Zolkin put those designers on the map. The Resistance have one. Android Netrunner. Fantasy Flight took this game and it went bonkers. Yeah. Machi Koro. Yeah. Crazy brought the whole Japanese thing over. Smash Up started making AEG a ton of money. X Wing kept. Game stores in business. Yeah. X-Wing is massive. It's still very popular. Descent, second edition, Suburbia. You know, we didn't really think much of Bezier games. I mean, they were printing these little pretz- beer and pretzels. Suburbia was like, wow, they can do these other big games. Tokaido, mm. Seasons, Legendary, huge popular yeah. deck building game. Keyflower, Richard Brees' most popular game. Sure. Mice and Mystics kept Plat Hat in business. Zombie Side, good night. I mean, Simon yeah. wouldn't exist now if it wasn't for Zombie Side. Kemet, Matigo's best game. Escape. I'm sorry, this is so. I, war. Right. I'm, I don't even know how you thought this was a dark horse. I, what I, were you talking about? I don't know. I just didn't think that you know. Like when I did my list, I wrote 2012, and then I did research. Wow. Okay. I didn't even think 2012 right, really? is that strong of a year. 2016 and 17 are really close, but 2012 is so pivotal of a year. Mm. Yeah, it, I mean, you've you've made me feel better about my number two choice. It is a, well, it's I, a great I, year. I would not like that to happen. I don't so think he's trying to do that. The rest of yeah, your I'm stuff sorry. is garbage. <laughs> that's right, that's what the chat's saying, too. That's all right. You, <laughs> we, we can all be agreed. That's fine. No. That's but, okay. But anyway, no. And again, this is obviously a very... I, I fully expect someone to come in and go... I can't believe there was no 70s or 80s. I need this list. is a really I can't tricky even, list. I can to barely do. make a top 10 from the 80s. Yeah. Let yeah. alone any one year. Yeah. yeah. It, it's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. This was a tricky, a tricky list to do, but fun. I enjoyed kind of going through memory lane with you. I enjoyed doing the research for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this was not one where we had to struggle. <laughs> Did you not like doing that? I like doing it. Yeah, I no, like it looking at the I was trying to make a would, joke that being, you enjoyed like, that, but not I enjoyed this part. putting the list together, was the joke. And then showing up here. To be screamed at, not as fun. <laughs> I enjoyed the screaming at Mike, though. That part was fun. Sure, that is good for everyone, I get right? passionate about this sort of we thing. We can all agree. Oh, we're going to get passionate once the cameras are off. <laughs> I'm going to do some Morse code with my eyelids. I need y'all to call, call for help. <laughs> all right, hey, so that's the last live thing for this week. We'll be back next week. We got all of our normal stuff next week. In fact, we got a couple uh, live playthroughs. Yeah. So keep an eye out for that. Remember the contest. Oh, yeah, big contest. If you're just joining in, slide back to the beginning of this episode to see how you can enter. You got plenty of time. Get it. All right, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Zeke Garcia. I'm Mike Delicio. And you've been going through the years with the Dice Tower.